You cannot honestly be that naive. You think I'd marry that non-subscriber? Ha! You must be out of your freaking mind. Cardi Kaizoku. Patreon. This video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. For the week of March 8th to the 14th, there will be OP06 pre-release tournaments going on. These tournaments can be run in a sealed or a constructed format. This video will be going over the sealed format. So for participating in the event, you do get this Zoro card, Purple Zoro. You also get a pre-release pack that contains two pre-release stamped cards. And then the winner of the event gets a pre-release winner Zoro card here. And if you're unfamiliar with the rules for a sealed event, it is an event where you can pick any leader you want. You have to bring your own leader or you can play any leader that you pull from your packs and you will get six packs to create a 40 card deck. This deck can contain any color card. It doesn't have to be restricted to your leader's colors and it can contain any quantity of cards. It's not restricted to four. And then you do have to bring your own 10 Dawn to play as well. As far as leaders go, the tried and trusted starter deck two kit has been strong in every pre-release event so far. And I would expect it to remain so. He just has such a strong effect being able to attack a second time by paying 3 down and discarding one card in hand. This is great at clearing board, building board advantage for yourself, or at finishing your opponent as you can swing for 12k twice. OP03 Charlotte Katakuri is also another historically favorite leader in pre-release formats. What he does is if you attach Dawn to him and he attacks, he gets plus 1k extra power and you can look at the top card of your or your opponent's life and then either put it back on top or on the bottom of their life or your life. So this does let you control your triggers. There are quite a lot of good yellow triggers in the set. On top of the plus 1k part being really good, regardless of if there are good triggers in the set or not. Because attacking for 7k every turn really does apply a lot of pressure at your opponent in such a low counter kind of environment. 7k attacks really do build up in the end, especially for just a one down investment, really cheap. And then I'd also have to recommend the blue Monkey D Luffy, Promo Luffy. Not too many people have this card, but it does have a strong effect in a sealed environment. So you do get to start with 5 life since he's a monocolor leader and every point of life matters. But what he does is Dawn times 1 when attacking. If you have 3 or less cards in your hand, you can draw a card. So this is useful in the late game in a sealed format because you'll have used up a lot of your counter and you just want one extra card over your opponent for advantage. And then being able to do this every time you attack when you have 3 or less cards in hand does build up a lot of advantage that your opponent doesn't have in the end. But I do believe that this will be the first pre-release event that this card can be run. So could be wrong, but I just have a feeling he would be good. And then from OP06 itself, I think Yamato might be the only viable one. Because Uta requires like a full film deck, Reiju requires a full Jerma deck. Hodi needs all the Fishman cards. And then if you do play Hodi, like he can never attack if you want to get value out of those Fishman cards. And then Gekko Moria also requires cost reduction cards that aren't available in 06 to utilize cards like Absalom and stuff like that. So yeah, I do think Yamato is the only one generic enough that you can run it in a sealed environment without requiring cards from past sets. Because what Yamato does is that they always have double attack, which is a very strong effect. Your opponent takes two damage whenever your attacks land. And then activate main once per turn. If your opponent has three or less life, you can add two rested dawn to one of your characters. So not only do you threaten your opponent from taking two life from just your leader attacking, you can add two free dawn to your characters to attack as well to make them take even more life. And again, in such a low counter and defensive environment, there aren't too many good blockers. There's not too many 2k counters that your opponent can get. The double attack threat is a lot scarier in this kind of format than it is in constructed. So I'm not going to like rank the cards this time around. I'm just going to talk about what cards that you'll like to see in your packs that will kind of indicate that you have a good draft going on. First off, every 2k counter should be run. There is a scarcity of counter power in a pre-release sealed format so the more 2k counters you have the better shot you have at protecting your characters and among the 2k counters some are better than the others for instance Kozuki Hiyori does have uses outside of being just a 2k counter for 2 dawn you can't play Hiyori out to replace the top card of your life with the card in your hand so this does let you control the next trigger you get out Gion is also quite useful as a character to play out she does have a 5k stat line, so good enough as an attacker right off the bat. Then what she does is, on your turn once per turn, when your opponent activates an event, your opponent places one card from their hand at the bottom of their deck. So it does discourage your opponent from using an event counter against you. There aren't too many good ones this set, but 
Given how hard it is to fill a 40 card deck with just 6 packs, your opponent will usually end up running some counter events in the end, so you'll find use out of Gion. Corona is also another 5k stat line 2k counter. Her on play is also quite useful, so if your opponent has 5 or more cards in their hand, you can choose one of these two effects. Either your opponent discards one card from hand, or you can give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 3 cost for the turn. The minus 3 cost part is probably not as relevant in a sealed format, because it's quite hard to get the combo pieces ready to abuse that. But the first part of the effect is strong. You make your opponent discard one card. If you hit like a 1k counter, you can kind of think of this as like you played a 4 cost rush attacker that attacked into leader and then untapped themselves at the end of the turn and force your opponent to counter for 1k. So I think this is a really great card for that. And if you do happen to hit like a 2k counter or like a late game card that they're keeping in hand, even more value for you. Kamazo is also another playable 2k counter, has that 5k stat line, but also a strong effect. So on your turn, once per turn, when you return Dawn on your field to your Dawn deck, you can K up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost of 2 or less. The only caveat is that there aren't too many good generic minus Dawn effects in this set, but if you do happen to find enough of the generic good minus Dawn effects, or if you are running Reiju, Kamazo does hit a lot of small chump blockers in the set, which again, there aren't too many in this set either, but what little chump blockers there are, they will be all like auto includes in everyone's deck, so you'll more often than not be able to KO something with Kamazo. And Sudu is also another playable 2k counter. She's not a 4 cost 5k, but a 5 cost 4k, so she can't attack leaders right off the bat without any extra dawn investment. She does require one extra dawn to hit 5k. But what she does is on play, you can trash two cards from your hand and then your opponent returns one of the characters to its owner's hand. So in a sealed format, when you're trading characters back and forth and then you do get to the point where you and your opponent get low on counters and any attacks at each other's characters pretty much kill them. In those situations, you are just like playing one character a turn at that point. So Sudu can bounce that character back to hand. Sudu does become a lot less valuable when your opponent has multiple characters out as they can just pick their lowest costed one to bounce back to hand. But in a very late game scenario, I feel like Sudu does become quite a good removal card but with a very steep price, so very niche usage, but still more useful than just a generic 2k counter. You'll also want to run blockers in your deck. Here are the generic blockers. There's a lot of conditional blockers in this set as well. We'll go over those after, but if you hit any of these, these have blocker always, so you'll probably want to include these in your deck. We only have three two cost blockers in this set. These would be what I would call the chump blockers. Shuraya is also chumpish. We'll go over him in detail though, because he has more usefulness out of being a chump blocker. So he is a 3 cost 4k blocker, but when attacking or when blocking once per turn, this character's base power becomes the same power as your opponent's leader until the start of your next turn. But as an attacker, he's a 5k attacker technically, and if your opponent happens to be a 6k base leader, he's a 6k attacker. But he's also really great as a blocker too. If your opponent puts down on leader and swings at you for like 7, you can just block with Shuraya, and he becomes a 7k. So any attacks at you can be blocked with Shiraya and then countered for 1k to prevent that attack. Momonosuke is also another interesting blocker. He's a 5 cost 6k blocker, so a little bit higher than the chump blockers. What he does is on play, you can place up to one of your Wano type characters other than another Kozuki Momonosuke on the top or bottom of its owner's life pile face up. While it is locked into the Wano type, this is helped out by the fact that a lot of the yellow Wano cards in this set are great in a sealed format you'll more often than not find targets to use with Momonosuke and heal yourself with. And then those Wano cards trigger out for free too, so it's a really strong combo. Lastly, we have Aramaki, the biggest blocker of the set, 8 cost 8k blocker. He has an effect that lets you activate main once per turn, discard one card from your hand, and then you can return a 1 or 2 cost character to the bottom of its owner's deck. Then this character gains plus 3000 power for this turn. So really this just gets rid of the chump blockers, the 2 cost chump blockers. Other than that, it is just a big 8k blocker. One caveat to note is that even though his uh, activate main effect sounds like Houndblaze, you actually can't just use it for the 3k buff. You have to actually bottom deck something first to be able to use it. You can check the Q&A for that ruling. So just as a warning, don't confuse it with Houndblaze's effect. Now we'll move on to the conditional blockers. These cards do have blocker, but it requires some other condition to be met that I think might not be too viable in a sealed format. The Douglas Bullet is a blocker if your leader has the film type. 
That would mean running red purple Uta, purple Shanks, green Uta, and there's probably some other film leader that I'm forgetting, but none of them are too strong in a sealed format, so you'll probably never get blocker value out of this guy. Borsalino is also a conditional blocker, who only has blocker when you have 5 or less cards in your hand. But he's a 2 cost blocker in that regard, so he is a trump blocker with a really nice stat line at 4k. This condition isn't too hard to meet. In the late game, you will usually have 5 or less cards in hand, so I would say this is the only viable conditional blocker I would run in a deck. We have Cosette as well, who only gets blocker if your leader is a German 66 type and your board has 2 or more Dawn less than your opponent. So not only do you have to run Reiju, you also have to have minus Dawn enough to be less than your opponent for this card to be a blocker, but she does cost 1. So I guess if you're running Reiju, this card could be viable, but otherwise it's not worth it at all. And we have Raki too, another 1 cost blocker. Her condition is that you have to have another Shandora Warriors type character other than Raki on board. Unfortunately, all the other Shandora type cards kind of suck, except for like Wiper, which is disappointing because I like the art for this card. And now here's anything that's not a 2k counter or blocker. We'll start off with red. Inazuma is the first red card. Inazuma is a 4 cost 5k, but if this character does have 7000 power, they gain Banish. Banish is really strong in a sealed format. Banish forces your opponent to either counter or lose a card that they would get from life because that card goes to the trash instead of their hand. So either way they defend against Inazuma, they're losing cards out of hand. Gasparde is a vanilla, so it has a really efficient stat line at 6 cost 8k. And those kind of vanillas are always strong in a sealed format. Shanks is a 10 drop, so that's all the dawn in your turn. But he has 12k power and an on play effect that is really strong. You can kill up to one of your opponent's characters with 10,000 power or less. So basically a 1 for 1. You play him out, he kills something, and then every turn after that, he can swing for 12k to kill even more things. And I don't believe there's anything that is immune to his on play, so pretty much kills everything in the set. But it can feel like a win more card. It's not a card that'll like pull you back from behind. But in games that are dead even, he can turn the tempo in your favor. Raise Max. He is a 1 Dawn card that on activate main, you can return this character to the bottom of its owner's deck and then you can give up to one of your opponent's characters minus 3k during this turn. So pretty much a death sentence on anything he targets, anything you give minus 3k. When you attack into it, they're probably going to expend too many defenses to defend it. So they usually just let it go. So you can think of Raise Max as like a pseudo removal card because you do need something else to attack into the target that you give minus 3k to. Gum Gum King Kong Gatling. So it's a 2 dawn event and it buffs your leader or character for 3k. And then if your opponent has a character with 7000 power or more on board, you can give it to one of your leaders or character plus 1k power for the turn. So the 3k and the 1k part can be on two separate characters or leaders or it could be on the same ones. Given the nature of how sealed events go, by the late game, your opponent will usually have 7k power or greater characters on board. 2 down for 4k power lets you attack over your opponent's characters to kill them easily, or you could use it for a lethal swing that they can't defend. And then King Kong Gatling also has a great trigger. You can kill up to one of your opponent's characters with 5000 power or less. This is great in the mid game, or it's great in the late game at killing blockers. Azure Dragon Stamp Flowing Water. It's a 3 down removal event. Its effect reads main, kill up to one of your opponent's characters with 5000 power or less. And then it also has a trigger that lets you kill a character with 4,000 power or less. So whether you pay 3 down for it or you trigger it, it's killing something on board. Moving on to green, we have Arlong. 4 cost 6k, so he's a vanilla stat line. But he also has a strong on play. So on play, you can discard a card from your hand and then up to one of your opponent's rested leaders may not attack until the end of their next turn. This essentially gives you incredible early game tempo because it'll save you one attack that you have to defend. And you can freely attack into something without worry about their leader attacking back into you. This is especially good into leaders like Katakuri and Kid, who are two really strong pre-release leaders. As Katakuri gets an extra 1k attack when he attacks with one Dawn attached, and Kid can swing twice when he discards a card from hand. So Arlong preventing them from attacking means that they don't get value out of their leader abilities. And then Arlong even has a strong trigger. You can rest up to one of your opponent's 4 cost or lower characters. Cody Jones. You probably never want to play him out on curve. What he does is he's a 7 cost with 8k power and he has rush. And on play you can rest up to a total of 2 of your opponent's characters and or dawn. And then you have to put the top card of your life into your hand. So the 1 life cost is pretty steep so you don't want to just drop him willy nilly. You want to drop him when he gets you the most value. If you happen to be safe behind blockers you could just drop him out on curve and then tap 2 things to kill. And then as a finisher he's great too. 
allowing you to bypass blockers or even rest your opponent's stun that they could save for a counter event. But his usage is really nuanced, so you do have to be careful playing him. Ryuma. Ryuma is probably the best mid-game card in the entire set, especially in a sealed format. What he does is he's a 4 cost 6k, so vanilla stat line. And then on play and on KO, you can KO up to one of your opponent's rested characters with a cost of 4 or less. So Ryuma kills something on play, and then if something does kill Ryuma via combat and it's a 4 cost or less, Ryuma does take it down to the grave with them. This makes him a card that people sort of ignore in the early game until they can play cards that are higher than 4 cost. Or it'll force them to attack in weird ways that they may not want to sequence. But that's Sumi. Just a strong vanilla. 6 cost 8k. Billion fold. World. Try kill your cosm. I don't know what that means, but... It's a 1 dawn green event. It's a defensive event. What it does is on counter. Up to one of your leader or characters gets plus 2000 power during this battle. Then if you have 8 or more rested cards, that card gains an additional 2000 power. This counts dawn too, so in the late game. If you play out a big character and then leave one dawn up, you can counter for 4k, kind of like a radical beam. This is probably the only good event counter in OP06, unfortunately. And then it even has a trigger, you can KO up to one of your opponent's rested characters at the cost of 3 or less. You couldn't even kill my boredom, so a 4 cost event in green. It has two effects that you can pick from. Before dawn, you can rest up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost of 6 or less, or you can KO one of your opponent's rested characters with the cost of 6 or less. And it even has a trigger that lets you just play this card for free. So it's a good removal spell, or it could rest a blocker that is preventing you from attacking for lethal. Pretty versatile, but it's not going to have too much value until the late game, where you can play a character on top of playing this event. Moving on to blue, we have Kuzan. So he's a 3 cost 5k, so he has a vanilla stat line. No counter though. But what he does is on play, you can draw 2 cards and then place 2 cards from your hand at the bottom of your deck in any order. So it basically just cycles your hand out, helps you fix your hand which is really important in a sealed format. And then he himself is a minimum attacker afterwards. Sengoku, 5 cost 7k vanilla. Monkey D Garp, he's a 5 cost 7k, so vanilla stat line as well. And his effect is really nice, dawn times 2 when attacking if you have 4 or less cards in your hand. Your opponent cannot activate blocker during this turn, or during this battle. So Garp basically is unblockable in the late game when you're trying to push for lethal. It's a 9k minimum swing when he does this. Could be great at finishing games or killing something that's hiding behind a blocker. Gravity Blade, Raging Tiger. 7 Dawn event. What it does is, on main, you can place up to 2 of your opponent's 6 cost or less characters in any order on the bottom of the owner's deck. A really strong removal card gets rid of 2 things on board. This is especially potent if you can protect one of your characters on board and then get rid of your opponent. Because it does get rid of 2 things. A really strong board control card, and then it even has a trigger. You can place up to 1 5 cost or less character on the bottom of its owner's deck. So it's great even as a trigger at removing something on your opponent's board. Moving on to purple, we have Vin Smoke Judge, 8 cost 8k. We don't really use the on play part of his effect because it revolves having a full German 66 deck, and those cards are and those cards depend too much on having Radio as a leader and having multiple max copies of each card. But the activate main part of Judge's effect is pretty nice. So once per turn, you can Dawn minus one and rest up to one of your opponent's Dawn cards. This does deny your opponent access to their counter events, but then again, there aren't too many good ones in this set, so this effect would be a lot stronger if it was another set. But still, he's an 8k beater. We also have Zephyr, 7 cost Zephyr, 7k power. What he does is on play, Dawn minus 1, you can nullify all abilities from up to one of your opponent's characters this turn. Then if that character has 5000 power or less, you can KO it. So it's a 7k body that can KO a 5000 power or less card. If you do combo with raise max, you can kill anything up to an 8k. And it also nullifies abilities that might be relevant. It can get rid of things like blocker or stuff like that. Yep, moving on to black, we have Gekko Moria, 8 cost Gekko Moria, the menace himself. So if you don't know what he does yet, what he does is on play, you can choose up to a 4 cost or less and then a 2 cost or less character from your discard. Then you can play up to one of them rested and the other one active. You do get to pick the order though. So essentially he's 8 dawned for 3 cards out. You'll play an attacker for the 4 cost portion and you'll play like a blocker or something for the 2 cost portion. So really strong card at rebuilding back your board or making your board even scarier than it already is. And he himself is a 9k attacker afterwards. I think it's safe to say that this card will literally win you games. Brook, 6 cost 6k. He has an on play that lets you choose one of two effects. You can put up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 4 or less into their trash. 
and then your opponent can put three cards from the trash to the bottom of their deck in any order. The second part of the effect is more of like a counter, counter tech. If you do happen to face like a Gekko Moria player, this does get rid of cards in the discard for them to use, but we play them for the first effect. It can KO a 4 cost, basically. And actually, technically it's not a KO, it goes straight to the discard, but it's not relevant in this set because there's no cards that are immune to KO, but yeah, this does get around that. Just FYI. So, 6 cost removal spell that comes with the body is great. Then we have Lola, Vanilla 4 cost, 6k power. Moving on to yellow, we have the Wano package here. Inu Arashi is a 4 cost 5k. Minimum attacks at your opponent's leader and he does a 1k counter, so he's great in hand too. His card effect reads Dawn times 2 when attacking. You can discard one card from your hand and you can kill up to one of your opponent's characters with the cost equal to or less than the number of your opponent's current life cards. That's not as relevant in a sealed format. You're not really stalling. Almost never have the uh, chance to use the effect to KO anything other than like a chump blocker. But what makes him strong is his trigger. If your opponent has three or less life cards, you can play this card for free via trigger. So that means if they attack you, you get him up for free. And then if you have a Momonosuke in hand, you can put Yunu Arashi back on your life letting you take one more attack because he just triggers back up for free. We have Onami as well at 2 cost 3k, more of a utility card. What she does is on play, you can give up to one of your leaders or characters, Banish for this turn. As we mentioned with Inazuma, Banish forces your opponent to burn cards. Either they burn cards in hand to counter the Banish hit, or they take the Banish hit and then they lose that card from life to the trash. And then Onami is great as a trigger too as it lets you KO up to one of your opponent's 5 cost or lower characters. Ikunojo is another Wano. Yellow card, 4 cost 6k. The elevated 6k stat line is really strong. And then her card effect is also equally strong. On KO, if your opponent is at 3 or less life, you can place the top card of your deck to the top of your life. Meaning that if you do kill Kikunojo, you heal 1 life. It makes it so that your opponent usually leaves Kikunojo alone, allowing you to pump up that 6k attack every turn. And then for one additional dawn, it becomes a really scary 7k attack. And then Kikunojo also has that trigger if that, that when your opponent is at 3 or less life, you can play it for free. So it synergizes with Momonosuke as well. And even without Momonosuke, it's always great to get free 6k bodies on board. Denjiro is another Wano trigger card. It's a 5 cost 6k though, so not as efficient as the other ones. But done times 2, if your opponent is at 3 or less life, this character cannot be killed by effects. But it makes him a little sticky. And then he has the same trigger that if your opponent is at 3 or less life, he can play this card. The only caveat is that he doesn't have a counter, and he costs more than the other Wano cards, so he can sometimes get stuck in your hand if you don't trigger him out. Nekomamushi, yet another Wano, 4 cost, 5k. 1k counter 2, so great card all around. And then Dawn times 2, this character can also attack your opponent's active characters. This lets you get rid of blockers, this lets you hit priority targets that they may be saving. He also has that beautiful trigger that lets you play him for free if your opponent has 3 or less life. Moving on to the yellow events, we have You're the One Who Should Disappear. It's a 0 dawn 3k counter. You have to trash a card in your hand to get access to that 3k though. But yeah, this turns a lot of the dead cards in your hand into a counter. And then on trigger, if you have 0 life cards, you can put the top card of your deck onto your life pile. But you have to trash a card from your hand afterwards. So it kind of gives you Anno's leader ability. But really strong defensive card overall. We also have Reject, the card that will be banned. Well, it's banned in Asia for 07 onward, but we don't know what they're going to do in English. But for now, we get to use this card and it's really strong. So the reason why it's banned is because it's a 4 cost event card in yellow that lets you pick one of two effects. You can kill up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of 5 or less, or you can deal one damage to your opponent and then add the top card of your life to your hand. It even has a trigger that lets you draw one card. So in the early and mid game, you can just KO your opponent's annoying characters that you don't want them to have. But what makes this card potent is the late game potential he, it has. You can kind of think of it as a 4 cost rush card that can attack your opponent and bypass blockers. And it attacks for an amount that your opponent can't counter against. Right, because it just straight up makes your opponent deal 1 damage. You do have to add a card from your life to your hand. But you're usually playing this effect when you're trying to end the game. And if you're at 0 life anyway, you don't have to do this part of the effect. One thing to note though is that this does activate triggers for your opponent it deals one damage to them so be wary of that if you know what triggers on the top card of their life then we have nine cost zoro the secret rare of the set he's a nine cost 9k attacker if you can drop him i think the game's usually over for your opponent as he can attack three times a turn because what he does is when attacking once per turn you can pay one dawn and then you can set that character as active 
And then at any time within the same turn, you can just pay 2 Dawn to set him active again. So for 3 total Dawn, you can attack for 9k 3 times. This pretty much clears any board or takes any amount of life from your opponent. Between Gekumori and Zoro, I think these are your like guaranteed game finishers. Lastly, we have Sanji, the second secret rare of the set. He's also a 9 cost 9k attacker. What he does is you can reveal the top card of your deck, then you can play that card for free if it's a 9 cost or less and it's not another Sanji. So essentially he's a 2 for 1. As long as you don't whiff and hit an event on the top of your deck, you get 2 characters for 9. It's not as like impactful as Gekko Moria and Zoro, but still a strong effect nonetheless, it's the next best thing. And then for the rest of your 40 card deck, you'll just want to run any card that has at least 5000 power. And that should pretty much get you to a fully built out sealed deck for your pre-release that'll give you a good shot at winning that purple Zoro prize card. So let me know how you guys do at your pre-release events. I know in the past, you guys in my Discord will show me the prize cards that you want at your pre-release events, so I'll be excited to see that again. And if there are any cards that I missed or any leaders that you think might be good as well, let me know in the comments below. Would love to hear from you. Alright, bye. Cardi Kaizoku.